Okay, friends. Now let us talk about cytoskeleton. And what are cyto cytoskeleton? Cytoskeleton is uh, actually the skeleton for a cell, as the name suggests. And it do, does exactly what uh, skeletons do. That means normally cytoskeleton give the rigidity to a cell. It gives the structural integrity to a cell. And it also provides the cell the framework uh, to carry out uh, its uh, rapid division, which is called the cell division. And also it helps the cell to uh, manage its uh, DNA content or, or genetic content and to help uh, to divide those genetic contents in equal amounts during the cell division. So there are different types of cytoskeleton present in uh, a cell. Mainly three types of cytoskeleton can be seen. One is an acting filament, which is a simple uh, thinner filament structure. And this thin structure can be found in various, in most of the cases of a cell. So it is uh, very, very much abundant in whole cell. And uh, it, it is necessary for cell to um, grow. It, it is necessary for a cell to, um, to show the motility in some cases, in, in case of uh, amoeba for example or in case of different cells in a body and uh, next thing is the is called the intermediate filament and this intermediate filament is uh, a coiled coiled domain containing protein so the coiled coil are connect with each other via via the rope like arrangement and this kind of arrangement give the structural integrity to the epithelial surface of the cells like the cells in our epithelial lining of our gastrointestinal tract as well as uh, in our uh, in the cells of our skin and in the third kind of cytoskeleton that is that are seen is uh, uh, that are called a microtubule and this microtubule are made up with a protein called tubulin it's actually made up with protein dimers which is called a tubulin a and tubulin b okay so so we divide into three part three branches here uh, finally, we end up with tubulin uh, or microtubule. So here we have actin, and we have intermediate filament, and we have microtubule. Okay, we'll discuss these three things in our future slides, uh, using different animations as well as uh, still slides. And we can see now the importance of microtubules are uh, in in during the cell division because these microtubules helps help to hold uh, those DNA uh, or hold the chromosomes together via the kinetochore attachment and it helps the cell to segregate chromosome during the cell division. And chromosome segregation during cell division is really very important because the mis, uh, mis division of, of this or misleading the chromosomal division can, uh, can produce uh, abnormalities in cell. Okay. So now let's move on to our discussion. We'll discuss about actin filament first, then intermediate, then microtubule. So now let us talk about the actin filament and actin filament assembly. As we can see, actin filament is a polymer. It's a linear polymer, and this polymer is made up with actin fibers. So we have a protein called actin. This actin protein, these actin proteins are arranged together like a coil-like structure, and they finally make something like that. So you can see this is not a straight uh, structure like that, but it is twisted, slightly twisted. As you can see, if we track their movement, that twisting we can see is like that. So it's a zigzag twisting we can find uh, in whole structure of actin filament. And this actin filament, if we zoom into a particular actin protein, then you can find something, st a structure like that. In this structure, we can see several regions are made up with alpha helices and several regions are made up with beta sheets. And these alpha helices and beta sheets are joined together via these loops. And in between them, what we can find is the ATP binding site. And this is really very important because uh, an actin protein along with the ATP bind state is very, very active and uh, an actin protein along with the bind of ADP is not that much active. So this drives uh, the formation of actin filament. Whenever actin protein is bound with ATP, it is very, very much necessary to attach with uh, another actin to make a polymer. And whenever this ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP, then this actin, filament, actin protein becomes uh, really, really unstable. They will be dissociated. So that's how the whole thing is worked. So what happens uh, in, during this actin assembly in very first place that the first few actin proteins come together, 
few actin along with ATP come together to form a core. We call it a actin nucleus. So actin nucleus is formed. After the formation of actin nucleus, then another sets of different actin proteins come in and they will attach. So not only one actin protein singly come in, but normally you can see here in this picture too, two actin proteins along with each other come in and join to this site. So we call it the actin dimer. So actin dimers will come in and they will bind with each other after the nucleation event to carry this out. So this in this picture what we can see, suppose the nucleation system goes on particular place like here and then what happens, uh, actin along with ATP come in and it, they bind to elongate this actin fiber and the direction it elongates we call the positive direction. So this is nothing to do with any charge or anything like that but we call it because in this direction the actin fiber is getting made. So new actin comes in and attach with this this end that's why it's called the plus end or positive end okay and in in the in opposite end it's it will be it is called the negative end uh, in this opposite end these actin dimers are getting dissociated because actin dimers are most of the time actin dimers are getting dissociated but a concept that most of the students mis uh, misunderstand is that in, they thought that this in positive end always uh, the polymerization occurs in negative end always the depolymerization occurs but that, that that is not only the case that is one of the case but is that is not only the case because in negative side also actin assembly is going on but the, the 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 rate of actin assembly in the negative side is much much lower than the rate of assembly at the positive side and similarly the late rate of disassembly at the positive side is much much lower than the rate of disassembly at the negative side okay so what we've made, we have made this nucleus and then, then finally the attachment and detachment is going on and what we can see here, uh, here is uh, our um, uh, first step and then uh, future round of uh, actin come in and bind with each other. So new actins will bind with each other and this, this part of the actin move to the middle point. Now again, after um, furthermore addition of actin, this will move to here and these are the new actins in this positive side. So what, what was started from here will move to this place. So this action is called the trade milling. Like a trade mill, what we can, we have to run through this trade mill like that. So if we start a position or begin here, then after addition of future, further, uh, so in this position, these actins are new. After further addition of actin, this new actin become old actin. That's what is going on all the time. Okay. Now let's talk about the assembly curve of this actin. So if you can see here, uh, we can notice that this uh, actin subunits are they are here pre placed here, and here are uh, they can form the nucleus. And after formation of this nucleus, more and more actin will come in and join together, and finally make the actin filament. Okay, and this is the actin filament formation. And what we can see in the very first step, it is the lag phase, or no actin uh, filament occur in this place but after further round the nucleation has been done after the nucleation we can see a rapid de increase in this polymerization we call it a log phase and after this log phase when uh, actin filament is built after the dissociation and uh, association event uh, it must definitely association is getting higher than dissociation it has to be done because of this polymerization event to occur and after occurring uh, this association uh, thing then whole system becomes stagnant or become constant so in this state we can say the polymerization reaches an equilibrium or a st in a steady state and in this con condition the concentration of the actin protein at the steady state is called the critical concentration or C sub C. This critical concentration is very very much important. If the critical concentration, if the concentration of uh, free uh, uh, free actins uh, are lower than the critical concentration, then these actins will come in and polymerize it furthermore. If it is higher than the critical concentration, then the actin filament will get dissociated and free actin five uh, proteins are getting released into the environment. That is the basic concept. Okay, so okay.